What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, we're going to dive into some of the things that came out today from the manda the first mandatory minicamp for the New York Giants. And I'm sure I'll have a couple more videos up over the next couple of days, as I'm sure we're going to get a lot of quotes that comes out from Joe Judge and members of the media and so on and so forth. And I'll talk about some of the things that I feel that are interesting that come out over the next couple of days. In addition to that, I will have a few more videos up for you guys over the course of the week, just trying to trying to space things out during the dead time. But before we get started on the news of today with all the players and everything else, the first thing I got to touch on, of course, is Jim Fossil. Unfortunately, news came out very early this morning that the former head coach of the New York Giants, Jim Fossil, passed away. And, uh, you know, first thing I'll say before I jump into what the Giants had to say when I was growing up as a kid, he was really the first coach that I kind of grasped onto because he was really the guy that was here for, you know, a sustained period of time. Dan Reeves wasn't really here that long. That's kind of when I first started getting into the Giants. And Fossil, of course, the one thing that really sticks in your head, at least for me, um, was the was the guarantee during that season where he took us to the Super Bowl in 2000. Uh, Fossil came out, I think we were 7-4, and four, and he went on to guarantee that the New York Giants were going to win their last five games. And well, I didn't. I don't think he guaranteed the last five games. Guaranteed they'd make the playoffs, and they ultimately ended up winning their next five games and then winning the first two contests in the playoffs, which led them to the Super Bowl. And he was a guy that had a good relationship with the players. And I always thought was a very good head coach for the New York Giants. Things kind of just fell apart at the end, and that's when we decided to move on with Tom Coughlin, in which we drafted Eli Manning in 2004. But uh, really sad to hear that as a Giants fan. I'm sure a lot of you guys are as well. Uh, Jim Fossil, like I said, was really the first coach that I fell in love with as a New York Giants fan, and I got a lot of great memories from those teams, even though they ultimately did not win a Super Bowl. There was a lot of great years there with Tiki Barber, Kerry Collins, Amani Toomer, Ike Hilliard. Um, those were the teams that I grew up with before, obviously, the Tom Coughlin and Eli Manning regime. But let's jump into some of the things about Jim Fossil first. This was tweeted out by the New York Giants. The Giants mourn the passing of former head coach Jim Fossil. And there's Jim. And, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about as I'm doing this video, um, you know, that great coaching staff that he had back in 2000. You had uh, Sean Payton was the offensive coordinator. Um, and then, obviously, he went on to take the New Orleans Saints job. Uh, and, of course, John Fox was the defensive coordinator as well. Went, ended up becoming a great head coach uh, with the Carolina Panthers. But just really sad uh, to hear the news today about Jim Fossil. And, um, obviously, my prayers are with his family. This coming out from the New York Giants. On behalf of the Mara and Tish families and the entire organization, I would like to express our condolences to the Fossil family and Jim's friends. We were all saddened to hear of Jim's passing. Jim was a good man, and his record as our coach speaks for itself. Jim distinguished himself by the way he managed our team and devoted his efforts to the firefighters and other families following the tragedies of 9-11. The players respected Jim and enjoyed playing for him and his coaching staff, and we appreciated his seven years of leading our team. And there were several other quotes today that you definitely should check out. Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan talked about how much he loved playing for Fossil. And, um, uh, yeah, obviously they had a great relationship. You remember him and Coughlin got off to a uh, rocky start, and then Strahan ultimately ended up loving Tom Coughlin. But um, just a really sad day, I'm sure, for a lot of the former players. And, of course, all the New York Giants fans out there. Jim Fossil was a New York Giants legend and a great coach in his own right. Um, but let's jump into some of the news in terms of the mandatory minicamp for the New York Giants and some of the things that came out today. The first thing I want to bring up was from Art Stapleton, and I'm sure everything's all right, but it kind of just talks about how hot it was today. Uh, the Giants running back coach, Burton Burns, actually had to leave um, and was escorted with the medical staff due to potential heat exhaustion. Here it is from Art Stapleton. Giants running back coach, Burton Burns, left practice today due to heat exhaustion in a bit of a scary scene. According to the team, the medical st uh, the medical staff expects Burns to be okay. Uh, real field temperature today in East Rutherford, 99 degrees. Burton Burns, of course, kind of up there in age. I think he's in his 60s. The running back uh, coach that, of course, that we brought in from Alabama last year. Hopefully everything works out. Sounds like it'll be all right. This coming out from Dan Salomon. Daniel Jones' early impression of Kadarius Toney. He brings a lot to the table. He's a real twitchy and explosive athlete. And Tony was there today, was practicing with the team. So really good to hear that as well. And Daniel Jones giving his first initial impression of his new wide receiver. And if you watch him on film, 
I think that describes him to a T. The first word that I think about when I watch Kadarius Tony is twitchy. And the second is probably explosive. Next up, coming from Dan Salamone. Daniel Jones on Kenny Galladay. You could tell he's a true pro. And Galladay later went on to talk about Daniel Jones, how they've, how they've built a relationship, and how they're starting to form, um, you know, a, a partnership with one another, which is what you want to hear. This then, coming out from Salamone. Kenny Galladay said, and Daniel Jones have met up a few times away from the facility. That's my boy. I can't wait to work with him. And, I mean, I'm glad that they're building a relationship, and he better be your boy. He's the guy that's throwing your footballs. Galladay then later goes on to say, loves the energy right now with the team. It just brings excitement to everyone. And with the offseason the New York Giants had and all the big names that they brought in, you would think they would be ultra excited coming into this year off the strong finish in which we finished 5-3 and three last year. This then coming out from Art Stapleton. I thought this was an interesting little tidbit that came out in terms of who is fielding punts today because that's kind of a question that I have. Punt returns for the New York Giants today, according to Art Stapleton, featured Kadarius Toney, Sterling Shepard, Darnay Holmes, Steve Slate, uh, I'm sorry, Darius Slayton, and a Dory Jackson. So maybe Tony will be used in some form of capacity with the punt return unit. We'll have to wait and see, but he certainly brings an explosive trait, and I believe he fielded punts well at Florida. This then coming out from Jordan Renan, and I just can't say enough nice things about Logan Ryan. Logan Ryan has been an incredible leader for this football team since we got him, um, and he just goes on to show it here. This is coming out from Renan. Logan Ryan um, taking his desire to be the next great Giants leader in the secondary to the next level. He said he's reached out to the players like Antrell Roll, Jason Seorn, and Corey Webster for any tidbit about becoming a better leader and a player. You're talking about going back to the days of Jim Fossil. I mean, Jason Seorn hasn't played here for 20 years. Uh, Corey Webster, obviously, a little bit after that, but these guys haven't played here for quite some time. Um, and reaching out to former leaders of this secondary to try to become a better football player. So you love to hear that as well. And then he went into further detail here, got this quote of GiantsWire.com. I always look at last year's just statistics, like broad. Who is the top secondary? Is it the Rams? What are some of the numbers that they put up? What are some of the franchise numbers? The best Giants secondaries. Who are those players? And I reached out personally this year. I reached out to Antro Roll. I reached out to Jason Seorn. And I reached out to Corey Webster. And I reached out to those guys, and I said, hey, I want to pick your brain and be great like you. I respect what you have done in the past. Can you give me anything? I I, I can't say enough great things about this guy. I absolutely love Logan Ryan. Um, and he truly, you could tell, and I, I, I fully expect him to get a captain's badge this year. You could, you could really tell that he's embracing that leadership role for the New York Giants. This then coming out from Jordan Renan. Unlikely we see Saquon Barkley on the field at all in minicamp. He does this rehab before practice. Joe Judge says the Giants are going to make sure that we take Saquon's rehab at the correct rate for his individual body and injury. As noted recently, going to take it slowly off the ACL. And I think that's great news. You don't want to rush him back. That's not something that you want to play with. You don't want that to be a lingering injury. When Saquon gets on the field, you want him to be 100% both mentally and physically. And I don't think it's in the Giants' best interest nor Saquon's best interest to rush him out into these, you know, mandatory minicamp practices. Now, would I like to see him get some contact before the season starts if he's going to be ready to go week one? Absolutely. I think your body needs to be accustomed to taking it. Otherwise, you probably risk getting another injury in the future. But you don't want to rush it. You want to take your time. And hopefully Saquon continues to rehab the injury that he picked up last year. And that was it in terms of the, what I felt were interesting quotes that came out. Joe Judge also spoke on Jim Fossil. Um, and the passing today, and talked about all the great things that he brought to the table as the New York Giants head coach. Like I said, there's going to be a lot more that's going to come out over the next couple of days with the mandatory mini camps. I'll be sure to talk about it. Nothing else really newsworthy. I'm going to have a couple of other separate videos up in which I talk about some of the pending free agents next year, and I'll probably have a video up on that tomorrow, or if not, the day after, and I'll talk about some of the guys that I think the New York Giants may or may not choose to keep on this football team. But, as always, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.